Hi guys, happy Friday. How are you? It is so good to be here with you guys on another Friday. I feel like I have hair stuck to me. <laughs> I didn't feel it until I started talking and then all of a sudden there it was. So how are you guys? How was your week? Did you get anything productive done this week? I did. <laughs> I feel like this week was much more productive than last week. I feel like last week I was still really trying to play catch up from coming back from Tucson and things were just kind of crazy and hectic. And honestly, when I look back at it, I don't think that it was crazy and hectic. I think that I just wasn't quite ready to be back yet. Like my body had still not really caught up. It's crazy because it's not like I was gone for that long, but I don't know, when you don't travel a lot, I think it takes a lot out of you. And last week, I definitely feel like I was really trying to like catch up on sleep and catch up on things that I needed to do. And I'm feeling much better and more like myself this week. Hi guys, hi, 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 hi Kelly, hi Joan. So glad to see you, Kelly. Hi Marvin, Jamie Martin. I love that, I love that, hi Mimi. Hi guys, what is up? So. Today we are doing kind of an easy project. Um, and that's okay, right? I mean, every once in a while, isn't it good to just like kind of take a step back and dial it down a notch and just make beautiful, pretty things? That's how I'm feeling right now. I'm feeling like I've done a lot of um, kind of challenging projects. I've given challenging projects to you guys and I'm dialing it back just a little bit because I feel like I kind of need a break. I don't know about you guys, but like, yeah. So these are beautiful, right? These are just gorgeous. If you saw the teaser pic for these earrings, we're making two pairs of earrings and we're using some of the really beautiful boho beads from Jesse James Beads, which are still buy one, get one 50% off. You guys, if you love the boho beads, I'm going to show you some of them up close. Um, other than the ones that we're using. If you're interested, go get some of the boho beads because they they don't stick around long. You can get them in sets of two and some of the smaller ones you can get in sets of four and they don't stick around long. Like when people discover them and see that they're there, particularly when it is a buy one, get one 50% off kind of situation, they sell out really, really quickly. So if you're interested in these, don't wait. Go ahead and get them while the sale is going on because I kind of have a feeling that the stock is going to be really, really low by the end of the weekend. So just keep that in mind. So we're doing two pairs. We're going to do a yellow pair, which is kind of out of um, my comfort zone. I don't do a lot of yellow, um, but I thought these beads were really exceptionally beautiful. And I had some leftover Swarovski beads from when I was in Tucson. And this was the perfect opportunity to use some of those up. And I've incorporated some blue with these, which is a little bit different. Hard to hear me. All right, let me scoot up just a little bit. How about with everybody else? Can everybody else hear me okay? I adjusted a couple of things here, but I feel like I haven't changed too much. At least I hope not. <laughs> I'm still fighting with the light situation. I don't know if you can tell, but I have like this glare that's going on. Um... So what was I saying? Oh, the yellow earrings, we are incorporating some blue with those as well. I feel like I'm way too close now. <laughs> I feel like you guys are going right up my nose. Um, and then I'm using a really beautiful green pair of boho beads and we're gonna make a green, this is kind of a green blue, like an interesting mix that, um, I don't know, this color combination, I don't know, sometimes I like to think outside the box with color combinations, and this is definitely one of those. This is a, some people are gonna really like this color combination and some of you are not, and that's okay because you can totally change this up and make it whatever you want to. This green though, you could totally wear this for um, St. Patrick's Day without it being like green in your face, right? Because some people just can't pull off like Crayola green, you know what I mean? Like grass green, that's hard for some people to wear. This color is like a muted kind of green, so it will, let me adjust just a little bit. I hope this helps for you guys. I don't know that it will, but you never know. Okay, so anyway, this, um, this green, some people can't wear green, this muted kind of understated green is kind of my go-to green. When I tend to wear like grassy greens, <laughs> 
I look like Christmas just because I have red hair. So I have to be careful about greens, but I do have a pair of really green boho beads that I am gonna show you that is um, really beautiful. And these would be really awesome for St. Patrick's Day too, if you guys are you know, kind of working towards St. Patrick's Day. I don't really know how long away that is. I know it's not that far away, right? It's almost March already. Um, so before we get to the project though, I do want to ask you guys a question. I've been thinking about this all morning and I've actually been thinking about this since before I left for Tucson and just kind of wanted to wait until we got back into the groove before I brought this up. So my question to you guys, we do our Sarah Ellis Designs Facebook Lives on Fridays, as you know, because it is Friday and you are here. So obviously you you figured that part out. We do one o'clock Eastern time for um, the Facebook Lives. How do you guys feel about moving that back to noon? Two questions, actually. How do you feel about moving it to noon? And is there anybody else that does a Facebook Live that is happening at noon on Friday? The reason... I ask is because I don't want to step on anybody's toes, right? There's room in this industry for everybody and I try to be as respectful as I can to everybody else who has Facebook Live because I know how much of this goes, you know, I know how much work and time and preparation goes into this. I don't want to, you know, keep my numbers low or take away from anybody else's numbers, right? So is there somebody else that's going on at noon Eastern time on Fridays? If there's not, would you guys be interested in moving this back an hour? Um, it would be really helpful to me, but I can keep it at the one o'clock time slot. So I'm really kind of just looking to you guys to kind of help me figure out whether or not it would be okay to move this or not. Um, oh, so that was a lot. I think I was holding my breath while I was talking. <laughs> Okie dokie. Uh, so Libby says, what time is that UK or USA? USA. We are in the USA. I have no idea what time that is in the UK. I have a feeling that that is late afternoon, probably in the evening if I had to guess. All right. So Tina says time is flexible for me. This is true because you can always watch Facebook lives in replay. So I feel like you can always catch it later. Like if you, if you can't be here for the live, obviously I like for you guys to be live so that we can interact with each other. But I know that sometimes it just doesn't work out that way. Really most importantly, I don't want to, I don't want to go over the top of somebody else's live. I just feel like that's really um, disrespectful unless I don't know. <laughs> if I don't know that I'm sorry. Right. All right. So Let's get down to the mat and let's look at some of these boho beads. I don't have the whole collection, but I do have a lot of them that you can get over on Jesse James Beads right now. We're going to look at those just a little bit and then we are going to make two pairs of earrings that are easy, right? Well, I mean, if you can do a wrapped loop, these are easy. If not, we'll go kind of slow. Great video yesterday on wrapped loops if you need that, by the way. Okay, so let's flip you guys around, shall we? and get down to it. So, let me adjust. Oh, I'm gonna just knock some things over. That's what I'm gonna do. Okay. So, I guess I need to kind of back you up a little bit. I feel like you're just sitting right in my lap. You're either going up my nose or sitting in my lap. You guys are just extra close to me today. <laughs> okay. So this is just a few of the boho beads that you can get from Jesse James Beads. And <clears throat> so, yeah, aren't they beautiful? I could just look at them forever. Like, I feel like they all have their own personality and their own little universe within them. Um, the yellow ones, these guys right here, these are m the name. They all have really interesting names. Um, this one is called Mimosa. And this is the one we're gonna use in our yellow earrings for today's project, okay? So just get ready to use this guy. He has these little pearl beads that are all over him. And the gold color here is, is almost, and I think that it may just be because it is the contrast to the yellow, it's almost a rose gold. Like it almost has like a pink feel to the, the gold color. And I'm not sure if it's an optical illusion or if like that's for real, right? It's so hard to tell. I'm actually going to use silver findings with this and it, and it ended up looking beautiful. So either one would be awesome. 
All right, so this is mimosa. We're gonna use it. And then the second bead we're gonna use, this one is called Old Fashioned. This is that green, kind of muted green that I was talking about that if you have a really hard time wearing um, bright greens for whatever reason, this is kind of my go-to green when, it, when I choose to wear greens just to keep from looking like I'm always Christmas all day, every day. Okay. So we're going to use this in our other earring and it has this beautiful glitter effect. It's just, I don't know. It's really, really beautiful. It's one of my favorites. It's hard for me to tell over the viewfinder whether or not the color is coming across true or not. If you've got a pair of these, you know how beautiful they are. Definitely check those out over on the site. They're so pretty. So, so pretty. So these little guys, this is called Lime Splash, and this is more of a true green. They're a little bit smaller than the other two beads that I just showed you. And like I said, most of the boho beads come in a set of two, but some of the smaller ones you can get in a set of or a, a four pack, okay? So just keep that in mind too. But this would be the perfect color green for St. Patrick's Day if you are not afraid to rock like a solid good green color. These are so pretty. Okay, then these guys, Pina Colada, I love a pretty white bead. I need to use more white in my jewelry design and I feel like these are gonna be the perfect kind of transition from winter into spring where the buds on a lot of the trees and bushes that I have around here are this kind of creamy white color. It's not like a stark snow white. So this is gonna be a really good bead to transition into spring. These are dark and stormy, and they absolutely are that, but stunning. So they have this mother of pearl that is all over them. I really, really, really love these. And I don't know if you can tell or not, but the clay that the mother of pearl is in is a, <clears throat> a glitter pearl. So they have like an extra layer of sparkle to them. They're really, really beautiful. These are really pretty in person. And so very similar to those are these guys. This is Cosmopolitan. The mother of pearl that's on these is pink. And then the glitter that is behind there is that really beautiful kind of <clears throat> Caribbean blue color, if you will. Um, yeah, I love these too. They're so, so pretty. And these you could mix with not only pink and blue, but you could also get away with putting some purple with these and they would look amazing. I would even put like some really kind of pale yellows with this as well. All right, so the little purple ones, these guys are called Aviation. <clears throat> and this is a true purple, really a beautiful bead. And <clears throat> the true colors, like the true greens, the true purples, you can literally mix these with anything, right? I don't know. There's just something about a true color that like on um, when you start looking at the color wheel, the, the options that you can mix and match are so much more open, right? Than when you're mixing and matching with something that's not a true color, right? That's getting into color theory and that is way outside of my wheelhouse. I just like things that are pretty. Last but not least, are these beautiful little blue guys again with that kind of Caribbean blue color? This is hypnotic blue. If you're looking for these on the site, these are really, really pretty, and I love this kind of creamy bead that is stuck in them. I don't know, I just think that these are really exceptional. They all are like all of the boho beads, they have their own personality, they have their own style, they say something completely different when you mix them into your jewelry designs, right. So Jessica wants to know, where do we get them? Jessica, you can get all of these beads from Jesse James Beads. So just go to jessejamesbeads.com. And right now, they are buy one, get one 50% off. So definitely take advantage of that. You use the coupon code happy hour when you go to check out. And um, just be sure that you add both, both of the ones that you want to the cart. And when you add your coupon code, it will take it off before you check out. Super cool. All right, so let's get to the earrings. Let's make our yellow pair of earrings first. And these guys, if you remember, this is Mimosa, just a little refresher. So this guy, Definitely a yellow color that I never use and I feel like I really should. It's a creamy yellow. It's like a, 
what's the word? I'm, it's not quite banana, right? This is more of a creamy kind of pastel yellow. I've got a rondelle bead here that I honestly don't know where this came from. This may have been part of one of my Jesse James bead strands. In fact, I'm almost positive that it that it was. I just don't remember which one. It's kind of hard to see, but it is not necessarily a clear bead. It almost has a blue-green shade to it, and then it has this yellow polish to it. It's really kind of an odd shift, but I love it and it works really well with the yellow bead. So we're going to use that guy. And then I have these leftover Swarovski flower beads. We're going to hang one of these guys. I used these in the design challenge when I was in Tucson. So I have plenty of these left over. And again, that yellow color, it's going to work really, really well with both of those. And then last but not least, we're using a small little bicone. Um, this is also a Swarovski bicone. This is just one that I had in my stash. And I really don't even know the name of this one, but it is more pale blue than the regular aquamarine um, Swarovski. So this is like a, a really light, light colored, pale, pale blue, okay? And then as far as what you need for this, it's pretty straightforward. You're just going to need two pieces of 22 gauge wire. We're going to create some wrapped loops. You are also going to need an ear wire. I'm not making my own. We're just going to use one that I have. You're going to need a six millimeter jump ring, a four millimeter jump ring, and you are going to need a head pin. And the head pin is for the little bicone. Um, what was I going to say? I had something. <laughs> Don't remember what I had something important to say and it has completely slipped my mind. Oh, I know what it was. Always double this, right, for two earrings. Um, that kind of goes without saying, but you never know, right? So this this is just what you need to make one earring. So if you want to make a pair, which I'm, I'm thinking you probably do, then you definitely need to double all of this. All right, so let's get started because this is pretty easy. It's going to go by pretty quickly. So the first thing that we're going to do is we are going to create a wrapped loop on the top and the bottom of our beautiful mimosa boho bead, okay? So we're just gonna use a, I've got about a four inch piece of 22 gauge wire. I'm using German style wire for this just because I find that it is easier to use than the artistic wire, but the choice is up to you, okay? I'm going to come down on the wire about an inch and a half, okay? Just giving myself plenty to work with. I'm using my chain nose pliers and I am bending the wire 90 degrees to create this kind of backwards seven shape. Kim says, hi, Sarah, I hope it's warmer where you are. I really would love to be able to say that it is warm. It is not, it is absolutely freezing outside. I am so ready for spring, you guys. I'm kind of over it. Okay, so now I'm gonna come in with my round nose pliers. I'm gonna grab that wire coming at it like a mouth, right? Just like a, an alligator mouth. Grabbing that wire so it's running between the barrel of the pliers, okay? You can see when you look at it straight on what it looks like. Now, don't move the pliers, don't move your hand. All I'm gonna move is the wire. I'm gonna take that wire and I'm gonna go up and over the top barrel of the pliers to create this funny little kind of question mark hook shape, if you will. And now I need to bring this tail end of the wire over here to the other side, right? To bring it on around. But the barrel of the pliers is in the way, so I need to just roll the pliers out of the way. I didn't move the wire. I didn't even take the pliers away. I just rolled them out of the way. Now I can guide that wire all the way around, right? So that when I do take it off, I do have a loop here, okay? I'm gonna put that back on the pliers and I'm gonna switch hands and I'm just going to wire wrap about three times and we are just creating a eye pin or an eye pin rather with our 22 gauge wire. Okay, so now I'm gonna come in and trim this off. If I can find my cutting tool. <laughs> 
So it looks like there was a question about the wire. I'm definitely using German style wire. This is a really good wire for wire wrapping. It is, it's, it is specifically designed for that purpose. Um, this is a half hard wire, so it is not a dead soft wire. Craft wire is dead soft, which makes it which makes it super pliable and bendy, and it just does not have the structure. I feel like that the German style wire has, so I always use the German style wire for this kind of wire work. So I'm gonna thread on my boho bead. And depending on your wrapped loops and the gauge of the wire that you're using, I'm using 22, but if you were using something smaller, um, you may find that your wire wraps are gonna slip to the inside of your boho bead. If that happens, you can just hold your bead out this direction, right? Just keep the space. Or you can thread on a smaller bead here to keep that from happening. I'm not gonna add any extra beads, um, but you definitely could. And I do know that if I were to push on this, those wire wraps will slip inside. But that's okay because once it's hanging the direction that I want, I don't have to worry about that anymore, right? Those wraps are gonna be right where they need to be. All right, so we're gonna create a wrap loop on the other side. So we are going to come in with our chain nose pliers. We're gonna grab that wire right as it is exiting the bead. And, <clears throat> Again, I'm not gonna move the tool, I'm not moving the bead, all I'm moving is the wire. I'm just taking that wire and bending it this direction, okay? So when I take my chain nose pliers away, I have the perfect little amount of space here where I can slide in my round nose pliers. And that is also gonna serve as the space where we can fill in with our wire wraps. So I'm gonna come in with my round nose pliers, just grabbing it just like that. Again, just like an alligator mouth, right? Okay, holding it more this direction so you can see it a little bit better. I'm gonna take the wire and I'm gonna go up and over the top barrel of the pliers. Okay, didn't move the tool, didn't move my hand. But now I do have to move the tool out of the way, just a little shift, right? So that I can take the tail end of the wire on around to the other side. Okay, I'm gonna switch hands and I'm going to wire wrap about three times, just like so gonna take it off of the tool. So now I have a wrapped loop on both sides of my boho bead and I'm gonna trim off the tail. All right. So now the next step is to attach our rondelle bead to this. And we are gonna do the exact same thing. We're gonna do a wrapped loop on both sides, but the wrapped loop on the top, before we do the wire wrapping, we're gonna snap it in place with this one right here. And then the wire wrap loop that's on the bottom, notice how the wire wrap loops are both going the same direction on this bead. On the rondelle, we want one of our wrap loops to go one direction and one of them to go the other direction. I'll show you what I mean. So you need another piece of 22 gauge wire. This is another four inch piece, okay? Same steps, I'm just gonna come in with my chain nose pliers coming down about an inch and a half. I'm gonna bend that wire 90 degrees to create that backwards seven shape. And <clears throat> I am coming in with the round nose pliers, grabbing that wire. I'm gonna go up and over the top barrel of the pliers. I'm gonna roll those pliers out of the way, okay? And then guide that wire around. Now, I'm gonna take this off of the pliers because at this point we need to attach this to one of the loops on our boho bead. So I'm gonna take the tail end of that wire and I'm going to thread it through one of the loops, right? Just like this. I'm gonna bring it down and then I'm just very gently <laughs> gonna snap those two loops together. Okay. So now those two loops are locked together. If you don't wanna do it this way, you can do this with a jump ring to connect the two. But for this project in particular, we're not. We're just gonna do direct wire wrapping here, okay? So when I have a situation like this where my loop is already, it already has a job, right? It's already holding on to another wrapped loop. I like to come in with my bent chain nose pliers and grab the entire loop and then switch hands. This is gonna help hold the bead out of the way. It's gonna, whoa, sorry you guys. It's gonna hold everything up and out of the way so I can very easily come in and do my wire wrapping and not have to worry that anything is in the way. All right. 
So if you guys need a really good step-by-step -step slow video explaining how to do wire wrapped loops, a lot of you don't, but some of you might, um, there is a Facebook Live on Jesse James Beads that you can watch and replay that we did yesterday where we went really slow with wire wrapped loops and we did them several times so that you have the opportunity to practice them as many times as you need to. Okay, so definitely check that out if you need to really practice those wire wrapped loops. Okay, so now we have our connection. It's ready to go. We're gonna thread on our rondelle. Now, just like I said before, we need the, the loop on the rondelle, the, the next one that we make, to be going in the opposite direction of the one that is already created. So when you're looking at it and the wrapped loop on the bottom is facing you, we need the wrapped loop that we make on the other end. Instead of going this direction, we need it to go, <laughs> instead of it going side to side, we need it to go this direction, right? But it really doesn't matter as long as you make it different than what you've got. So in other words, <laughs> try to break this down a little bit better. So if I were gonna make that root, that loop in the exact same direction as the one that is, is already there, I would grab the wire this way, right? So that I would bend my wire. But I need it to go the other direction, so I'm gonna grab it this way, right? So now when I make my bend and I look at it from the side, I'm seeing the side of this wrapped loop on the bottom, okay? All right, made that bend, <clears throat> and now I'm coming in with the round nose pliers. Treat this the exact same way as you would any other of the wrapped loops that we've already done, taking the wire up and over. Roll those pliers out of the way. Guide that wire over to the other side. And now we are going to wire wrap. So we've got that wrapped loop on the bottom and now we are going to trim that tail off and we are almost done. That's why we're doing two pairs today, you guys, because these are quick and easy and you can get on with the rest of your day and take these and make a bunch of pairs of boho beaded earrings for your weekend. All right, so I do want to straighten up my loops just a little bit when I'm looking at them straight on, okay? So that's what we've got. And you can do this two different ways. If you wanted the rondelle to be on the top, it could be, I want that boho bead to be on the top. You can make it any direction you want. And, oh, you guys, that's awesome. So Joan and Steph said they were practicing last night the wrapped loops and they were starting to look really good. That's awesome. I love that. Practice makes perfect. <clears throat> All right, so we're gonna take a six millimeter jump ring. This is gonna be the connection that we have on the bottom. So I'm gonna take two pairs of pliers to open my six millimeter jump ring, just grasping it on either side and opening it with a little twist. Don't ever pull them open, okay? And now we're gonna thread on this Swarovski flower bead. Fits perfectly on this six millimeter jump ring. I don't have to do any crazy wire wrapping. It's very, very convenient. I love it when it happens that way. Okay, now I'm going to take my jump ring and thread it onto the bottom loop that is on the bottom of our rondelle bead and I'm gonna close that back, okay? Make sure you've got a good close on that. And if you wanted to stop at this point and just add an ear wire, this would be a beautiful earring all by itself, but I do want to bring some of that blue that is just really kind of a whisper in this rondelle down here to the front of the flower. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a head pin and our little blue, our pale blue bicone, and I'm just gonna thread that onto a head pin, and we are going to create a wrapped loop on the top of it. If you guys prefer just a simple loop where you just bend the wire, trim it, and roll it back, you can do that. I'm just a wrapped loop kind of person, so that's usually my go-to, right? But either one will work. Don't feel like you are you must follow every step that I give you. You know, you can do whatever works for you. Same thing, I brought the round nose pliers in, I'm going up and over. I'm gonna roll those pliers out of the way and guide that wire on around, and I'm going to switch hands, okay? And I like to use another pair of pliers when I grab that wire to do the wire wrapping.
and I'm ready to trim off my tail. <laughs> Kathy says, sparkle, sparkle. Yes, lots of sparkle. I figure if I'm going to wear yellow, which is weird for me, then I want it to at least be really, really sparkly. <laughs> All right, so now I'm going to use a four millimeter jump ring. You can use a six for this if you want to. I just wanted to use another very small jump ring that was unobtrusive, right, for this. So I'm going to thread my Swarovski bead onto that, and then I'm going to bring it over here to the earring, and I am going to hook this. Hold on, I'm gonna be sure that I've got everything facing the direction that I want it to face. So I'm gonna hook this to that six millimeter jump ring where that flower bead is, right? Just hooking it on, and then I'm gonna close it back. So when this is hanging, that bicone is going to hang right in front of that flower, and that's exactly what I want. It's just a little extra movement, a little extra sparkle, another place for the light and the sun to catch on those beautiful crystal beads. All right, last but not least, we're ready to add our ear wire to this, and this earring is done, and we're ready to move on to earring number two. All right, so I'm just going to open that up and thread that on to the wraps loop at the top of my boho bead, and my earring is complete. So now all I need is just the mate for this those work up really, really quickly. Just a little practice with your wrapped loops and you can have a really awesome, this is gonna be a great earring for spring. It's a little longer than some people like, so you could leave the rondelle out if you wanted to and just use the boho bead and the flower bead to shorten this up. Or you could, instead of adding the flower bead here at the bottom, you could actually add a really long tassel here and make this a pendant for a necklace. So a lot of different options. As always, I try to give you guys as many ideas as I can so that you can take the design and use it however you want to, but I think it turned into a really pretty pair of earrings. And what's funny about it is when we very first started, I told you guys that this bead, the boho bead, has this pearl bead that is in it, right, all around it. Well, it is a white bead, but when you bring in that whisper of blue from the rondelle and the blue down here in the bicone, it makes the little pearl beads look very light blue. It's amazing how things like that happen. So just a little side note. It's funny how color works like that. All right, so that's earring number one. Let's move on to earring number two, and then I will let you guys get on with your day. So Remember, we are using this beautiful muted green bead. This one's name is Old Fashioned. If you guys are looking to buy some boho beads over on Jesse James Beads, now is the time because they are buy one, get one 50% off. Don't forget to use your code when you go to check out. It's happy hour to get your 50% off. Okay, so we have our bead and this guy is gonna be the focal bead. We're just going to add some color. We're going to make some cluster beads to go over the top of this. But the first thing we want to do is we want to thread this onto a head pin. I'm using a little bit thicker of a head pin than I used in the previous project. Um, you can use your own, create your own knotted head pin if you want to, but I'm keeping it easy today. So we're just going to thread this onto a regular old head pin. And we are going to create a wrap loop at the top. And again, if you don't want to do the wrap loop and you just want to do a simple loop, you absolutely can do that just as long as you've got a loop, right? That's the most important part. Doesn't matter how you get there, as long as you've got a connection at the top. Coming in with the round nose pliers, we're going to go up and over. I'm going to roll the pliers out of the way. Go ahead and bring that wire on around and switch hands and do our little wire wrap here. Okay. And the cool thing about this project is this earring in particular is very, very forgiving. So if your wrapped loops, even your simple loops, if they are not pretty, <laughs> if you don't like them, that's fine because you know what? They're all going to be hidden and you're not going to see any of them. And I love projects like that because it's nice to not feel like every little thing is going to be on display, right? You don't have every little twist and turn in your jewelry piece out there for everybody to judge, even though they're not. But we are, right? We're our worst critics. 
So we've got our wraps loop at the top of our boho bead. This guy, I'm just gonna sit him to the side until we're ready to add all the clusters to him, okay? So for the clusters, actually I will bring it back out to show you the colors and why I chose these colors. So we're gonna do a combination of some rondelles in this really kind of funny blue gray color. And you're gonna need four of those. Two of them have already been wire wrapped and we're only gonna wire wrap two more. And then I have this green color, this is kind of a sage green. It's almost a blue sage though. And at first I thought this color combination is terrible until I brought it all together and really looked at it. And it is an interesting combination. Some people are gonna hate this color combination, that's okay. But for me, this is really kind of a way to draw the blue out of that green because on its own, there is no blue here. It's almost green gray. But when you bring in this kind of muted, weird kind of gray blue, it really does bring out a little of that blue undertone that is in that kind of sagey green. And then dress it up a little bit with this pop of like a deeper green, just to remind you that, yeah, it is green, it's not blue and it's not gray. So kind of a weird com combination. Maybe you love it, maybe you hate it. You can change this up any way you want to. You can use any beads that you want for this. And Kathy says, this is a romantic combo. I think so too. And these Chinese crystal beads, I get these whenever I can find them. I just love them so much. And this one has that fire polish on it that has like that metallic blue. So you're definitely sure that it's a blue, right? It's not just a gray. I think without that metallic finish on it, it wouldn't, it wouldn't quite have the same effect. Okay, so we're just gonna wire wrap these and we're gonna put them on head pins. I've already done two of them. So we need to do two more of the larger and two of the small ones are already done. So we need to do two of the smaller ones. So I'll sit these out of the way. We'll wire wrap these real quick and then we will put these together in um, kind of a grape bundle. You know what I mean? It's like putting together a, a group of grapes, a little cluster. Okay, so just gonna thread these onto head pins and make this as easy as possible. Um, you can do your own knotted head pins if you want. You can even do head pins that have the um, ball end on them if you want. Your loops here, I'm doing wrapped loops. You can do simple loops. None of it is really gonna be shown. It's definitely just gonna kind of disappear into the design. Okay, coming in with the round nose, going up and over, and roll those pliers out of the way. I'm kind of speeding through this a little bit faster this time. Okay, I'm gonna grab that wire and wire wrap it. Okay, and then I'm going to trim that off. So there's one of those, and we're ready to do the next one. Okay, come in with the chain nose, grabbing right as it is exiting the bead. Bend the wire, don't move the pliers or your hand. And then in with the round nose pliers, up and over. Roll the pliers out of the way. Guide the loop around, switch hands, and I'm gonna wrap about three times. So one thing to keep in mind when you're doing your wire wrapping, and I mentioned this yesterday in the Jesse James Beads Facebook Live, um, but I'll mention it here just as, as well here. The information is just as important. Um, never force more wire wraps than you have room for. If you do, you tend to risk cracking the bead and it will crack right at the top where the hole is. Now I cannot tell you the number of times that I have done that where I've looked at it and I've thought, oh, there's room for just one more wrap around. And that one more wrap around is all it takes to crack the top of the bead. Particularly when you're using um, Swarovski beads because they're a little bit softer and your Chinese crystals, just because they tend to be a little on the delicate side. So definitely don't force a loop. If you don't think there's room for it, then don't do it, right? Okay, so we're going a little bit smaller with the rondelles here and coming in with the round nose pliers. 
I'm going up and over, whoops. Adjust my grip a little bit and on around. So based on all the things that you guys have said, I'm just gonna wire wrap here. Um, it looks like I might move this from now on to noon instead of one. I will definitely post it on the Facebook page to let you know for sure, um, just in case I find out between now and then that somebody does have a Facebook Live happening. Um, but it looks like we're gonna move from our one o'clock time slot to noon, okay, on Fridays. All right, last but not least, we've got one more to go. And then we are going to put all of these together. And we're gonna use a series of four millimeter jump rings to put these together. If the four millimeter jump rings are too small for you to use, you know, if you just really kind of struggle with them, because they are on the small side, you can use six millimeters for the project as well. Okay. And just going to wrap these around. Or this around, rather. Okay, take that off and trim the tail. Okay, so... You'll remember, I already had two of the larger rondelles were already done and two of the smaller rondelles were already done. So we have four total. And we are going to put these together with four millimeter jump rings. And some people like to do this top to bottom. Other people like to do this bottom to top. It really doesn't matter as long as you get it together. <laughs> it makes no difference um, how you do this. So what we want is we want our boho bead to be on the bottom and we wanna build our cluster of beads up over the top of this. A lot of times I do this the other direction and I'll have the big bead on the top and then I'll have the cluster hanging below. But I thought I'd change it up a little bit and so we're gonna build that cluster up on the top over the bead so it's gonna kinda of sit over the top of this big bead here, okay? So the first thing I want to do is I want to take one of my four millimeter jump rings and I'm going to use two pairs of pliers to open that up. Okay. And I'm just going to thread that on to the wraps loop on the top of the boho bead. Now, before I close this jump ring, I'm going to thread on two of my rondelles and I'm starting with the larger beads. So I'm going to thread on one and then I'm going to grab with another pair of pliers so that I can open up the other side here so that it's my tool is not in the way and close I mean not close thread on a second rondelle and now I'm going to close that jump ring back okay now at this point I have to lay this down <laughs> and it is such a pain because once you start building your cluster and you have to lay this down and then pick it back up, then you have to find that four millimeter jump ring again, which is not so bad at this point, but after you've made a really big cluster, that can be a pain. So one thing you can do is if you've got one of those extra hands clips, you guys know what I'm talking about, right? Let me show you what I'm talking about. So mine, whoa, mine has a magnifying glass on it, right? But it has these little extra clips when I am doing this and I'm not doing Facebook Live, a lot of times I will clip that four millimeter jump ring and let it hang, right? So that I don't have to go find it again. <laughs> Everything is right there ready for me to go and I have both hands free and it's a whole thing. So um, definitely come in handy. Any kind of clip that you've got, it works really well when you're making beaded clusters. All right, so I'm gonna take another four millimeter jump ring and open this one up. <laughs> Wanda says, dim nails are still looking good. Okay, so I have to tell you, some of you may have already heard me complaining about the nails. They have got to go. They have got to go. I cannot get anything done. It's driving me crazy. All right, so the four millimeter jump ring that I've opened, I'm gonna hook it to the four millimeter jump ring that has the two beads on it, but I wanna be sure that one bead is on one side and one bead is on the other side, right? I don't want the two beads that are already there to be on the same side. So just be sure that when you hook it on, it's it's separating the two beads out. That's what's gonna help to create that kind of cluster shape. Now I'm gonna thread on two more of the rondelles. And I'm 
Well, this is why the four millimeters are kind of hard because you got to get the pliers out of the way to thread everything on. Okay, and now close that four millimeter jump ring. Now at this point you could just stop if you wanted to, right? You could add the ear wire here <laughs> and it would still be really beautiful. <laughs> Kelly says, I wish I had a third hand for reels. Me too, but let me tell you. So I have, I have a stipulation with the third hand. Like I only want the third hand to come out when I need it so that the rest of the time I don't walk around looking like some weirdo <laughs> with like this is weird third hand. I want it to be like retractable. <laughs> okay, so it is definitely Friday. All right, so again, I have to sit that down. If I had that third hand, I wouldn't have to fish for that four millimeter jump ring again, but I have no choice. <laughs> Jay says, but they look so good. They look so good. So good. Yeah, the fingernails, they do look really good. I do love them. I think they're beautiful. And it's so much easier than worrying about my funky old fingernails underneath there. But truth be told, I cannot get anything done. And if I drop something that is flat or like picking up these little jump rings, oh, heck no. I can't. I have to literally like do it that way because I can't pick up anything. It's terrible. I'm just not used to it. They've got to go. I'm going to try to soak them off this weekend. <laughs> so anyway, all right. So I've opened up this four millimeter jump ring and I've got to find that four millimeter jump ring that's already there, right? And again, you want to be sure that your bead dangles, one is on either side. Sometimes it takes a little finessing to get it Make sure that all the beads are evenly spaced out. You don't have two on one side. Now we're going to go with a little bit smaller <laughs> rondelle. Okay, so there's one. And one more. And then we've got one more layer to add. And then we'll add our jump ring, I mean our ear wire. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and close that up. <laughs> Kelly, go, go, gadget. Go, go, gadget, third hand. <laughs> all right, see? Okay. Really, mm -hmm. I can't do it with the pliers, can't do it with my fingernails. <laughs> All right, open it up the fourth jump ring, and now I have to look for that one on the top. Make sure that the two green, the smaller rondelles are separated, <clears throat> and thread those on. And now just to avoid having to <laughs> find that fourth or that four millimeter jump ring again, I'm going to go ahead and thread on my ear wire and close up that jump ring and just be done, right? I don't want to have to close the jump ring and then open the ear wire and close the ear wire after I find it. So just saving myself a little trouble. So now we have this really fun kind of cha-cha style earring. It's got lots of movement. It's got some fun clicky clacky sound with it that might drive you crazy, but I kind of like it. <laughs> I'm weird like that. And it looks really, really beautiful. That movement is gonna catch the light, the rondelles, all the facets on that rondelle are going to catch the light, but you still have this big, beautiful boho bead that is really the centerpiece of the design. And of course, like I said, you could flip this the other direction, right? Have your dangles on the bottom and have your ear wire on the top if you wanted to, but we're just kind of doing a little different. So we've got this really beautiful earring that I don't know, I feel like I could definitely wear this with blue jeans, my blue jean jacket, my hoodies, right? It's not overly dressy, but you could definitely get away with wearing this out, you know, for something special. One of those cool designs that can go either way. I like that, I like it a lot. All right, so let me flip you guys around. Whoa, as I just throw this yellow earring at myself. And we will take a look at these earrings and then I will let you guys go. Okay, all right, fix the light so that I'm not blinding you with my face. <laughs> oh, Tina says I can't deal with the smells in the nail salon. I know, right? It's so strong when you go in there. It's just, it's crazy. And it takes forever. Like, I'm one of those people that, when it comes to things like that, I feel like I have a million going on. <laughs> I have a million other ways I could be using my time. And sitting at the nail salon is to me, it's like the equivalent of lunch. Like I hate lunch. 
I just want food to make itself and then like jump into my mouth, right? I don't want to stop what I'm doing in the middle of the day and make food and then eat food. <laughs> That's the way I feel about nails. I don't want to go and sit and wait because I could be doing so many other things, right? Okay, so Meredith. Meredith says, I love the earrings that you're wearing. Thank you. These are my Super Bowl. These were a project that we did over on Jesse James Feeds. These are my Super Bowl earrings that, of course, go with my Chiefs shirt. Oh, yes. How about them Chiefs? All right. So, <laughs> thank you. They're little razzle-dazzle earrings. I like them. Okay. So, let me show you guys the earrings. I'm not going to put one on because I am wearing my Super Bowl earrings. And... <laughs> By the way, the back of my shirt definitely says Mahomes, just in case you were wondering. And <laughs> so these are the beautiful yellow ones. I will hold it up so you can see the size there on the earring because they are a little on the long side, but I really, really like them. And this yellow, I don't know, it's just really speaking to me. This says springtime. I really, really love these, and I definitely think that I will actually wear these, okay? Okay. And last but not least are the beautiful green ones that we put together. Let me put this one on. Oh. So these are a little bit shorter, right? And you can see how well that blue works with that kind of sage green. It's definitely a different combination, but this is definitely the way that I get away with wearing green without looking like I am always Christmas time. So this is a green that I, I can definitely get behind. I definitely will see myself wearing these as well. So for St. Patrick's Day, this will be a good green choice for me. So that's it, you guys. It has been so much fun. I like it when we sometimes do little easy things. And we got to do not just one project, but two. So that was really fun. I thought it was great. And I hope you guys have enjoyed these earrings. Don't forget to take advantage of the buy one, get one 50% off over on Jesse James Beads. If you need the link to that, it is in the little comment section at the top of this video, I believe bottom of this video. I don't know how it ends up coming on Facebook, but there's a link directly to the site if you want to use your happy hour coupon code to get the discount on the boho beads. And that's it. Isn't it a wonderful week? I'm so glad you guys came here to join me today and oh, I will see you guys again next week. So next week, 11 a.m. with Jesse James Beads and Plan on it being noon on Friday of next week. I'll post for sure, just in case things change, def change definitely check on Sarah Ellis Designs to find out. But as far as I know, I think we're going to bump it back. You guys have a wonderful rest of the day and a great weekend, and I will see you guys again next week. Bye.